and welcome to the December 5th, 2023 Select Board meeting. Uh, the board is present minus Linda. We have the town manager, the town clerk, members of the town staff. Let us stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have the approval of our meeting minutes from November 21st, 2023. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Approved. All right. Uh, first public comment. I will close the first public comment. No public hearings, no reports, no appointment, presentation, other guests. Terry Wilson, local plumbing inspector. So I would like to address the board with Terry here. So I wrote this little memo up real quick so that I could be concise, put my eyeballs on. So ladies and gentlemen of the select board, I want to give my wholehearted endorsement for the appointment of Terry Wilson as an LPI. Terry came to us with experience working in a code enforcement office, which is actually how she and I met, as well as many years of experience in the construction business as the owner of a construction company. I knew the addition of her to our Broark team would work out well, but even I'm amazed at how far she's come in the short six months she's been here. Terry successfully took the training required for her LPI with very limited time to study. Although she already knows a lot about construction, her company was not a main company, so she's had to learn all of our state codes to be able to pass these tests. I've taken her with me on a few inspections since she's taken her test, kind of given her my own test, if you will and I'm impressed. She asks all the right questions on site. She's shown that not only will she catch the issues, but that she's willing to call those issues out and require the contractors to make it right. And most importantly, in our line of work, she has the ability to say, I'm not sure, let me check and I'll get back to you, rather than hazarding a guess on the spot, which can be costly for contractors, dangerous for homeowners, and potentially expensive for the town. She's done all of this while constantly improving the flow of work on the planning side of the office while also assisting me administratively. I feel that appointing Terry as an LPI can only allow us as the town to serve our community better. She has the drive, knowledge that is without ego, and will undoubtedly be an even greater asset than she currently is with this board's appointment. Thank you. <laughs> I meant it. You can pay me that 20 bucks later. <laughs> You work cheap. <laughs> <laughs> you see my paycheck, you sign <laughs> So what exactly does this mean, Terry? <laughs> so this means that you have an alternate inspector for doing plumbing and subsurface inspections in the event that there's a conflict of interest, if Irish is not in, if Irish is on vacation. Most towns, it's, it is advised to have some type of an alternate just for that reason. Specifically for plumbing, but not No, for, for code work. also, but code I have a I have classes to take to complete for yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So, well, the, typically okay. you do your certifications in in two chunks. So you do the LPI chunk first because that gets you out in the field, um, provides the quickest relief so to speak to an office, so she'd be able to in my absence whether I'm out sick as I have been recently, if I'm on vacation, or even if I'm out on inspection and a plumber comes in to pull a permit, she'll be able to review those and sign those rather than, you know, the round and round that happens now where they have to leave them, we have to either email them or they have to come back and get them. Um, so she'd be able to do that, start doing those types of inspections while she works on the rest of the certifications because there's about another dozen or so certifications to be received before she's fully certified to do everything that I do. So this is step one. Step two is to ultimately allow her to do the rest of her training. But this provides immediate relief and, and doubles the service that we can provide in our office to our residents right now for 
that portion. So the goal is to have you both be code enforcement officers? Or? To have her be, ultimately to have her be the uh, deputy or an assistant because it, it's, uh, we've already mentioned and we won't beat the dead horse on absences, that kind of thing. But additionally, if there were ever to be something that was perceived as conflict of interest for me to make a decision on, um, say something has gone before Board of Appeals, Board of Appeals has overturned my decision, uh, going forward there might be a decision that needs to be made that I could be deemed as prejudiced on, and this would allow her to step in and make that decision and thereby spare the liability on the town. So basically, if we can double up, then we don't have to. Most towns, most municipalities will contract with another municipality at, obviously, nothing's cheap, at their pay rate to have their, um, you know, like say, when Wells, I covered North Berwick when Roger was unwell. North Berwick had contracted with Wells to have that service provided. We don't feel that if we have two competent people who are very capable of being certified that we should be paying our money out to other towns for that same coverage that she could provide for me. So you're supervising Terry or is James or? James right now is still the department head. Um, I'm doing some supervising uh, courses for him to ultimately, so you'll be seeing my smiling face back here at some point to become the official department head. Um, but yeah, she would Lisa, still be. If you're uh, talking about um, the training part, we do inspections together. That is okay. part of it. Yes. So, um, okay. so I can learn everything that obviously that she knows in addition to everything that I've book, already book know. Book training and only goes so far. Yeah. yeah, book training only goes so far. So I, I will take her out in the field with me and teach her particularly some things that are often overlooked um, when you're doing an inspection. It's easy to miss things because there's a lot to see. So you were working a, well, you are <laughs> working a full-time job. Will this take away a lot of what you're doing now to go uh, to no. code or? No, 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 because the other piece of that that James is aware of and um, that Lee J and, and the town attorney and I have all discussed previously is I'm, um, I think I got the impression that previously planning did planning and code did code and they're really um, overlapping kind of jobs. So <laughs> I'm helping to pick up some of the planning stuff and we're kind of tag teaming everything. So instead of, you know, planning's here, code's here and there's this, we're, we're going more towards this so that no matter what, if she's on vacation, I'm on vacation. I know you hate this phrase, James, I'm sorry, but if one of us gets hit by a bus, the world doesn't stop here because it doesn't stop. For the contractors, for the developers, it doesn't. And it just makes more sense to have both of us able to cover at least the surface. We'll both still have our specialty things that we maintain in our, our particular career paths, so to speak, but it allows us to provide an overlap that prevents any missing services for the town. And honestly, it would also help when the workload is, is exceptionally high to be able to say, okay, well, we don't have much in planning going on, but we have a ton in code right now, so you help me. Or code has slowed down, but planning's picked up, so I'll help you kind of a situation. That's what we're, we're aiming for, the gruesome twosome over here. You won't be, we, if, if your concern is that you're going to lose the services and planning, that is absolutely not the case. We are making sure of that. As a matter of fact, it's been reported to us, I don't know how much James has or has not heard, but um, it's been reported to us that the planning board meetings are running better and that the entire planning board process is, the entire planning process is going better and smoother since Terry has started. And she's obviously still been working on her LPI training and it has not only not impacted but improved. So I've actually heard that from multiple board members about the two of you and what you've been doing to help them out and how smooth it's been running and that even came up with our joint meeting last week last week last week. So I apologize for missing that. I've been and this is part of why in. it's so important to me as I've been uh, dealing with a medical condition, been in and out of the hospital the last two weeks and Terry's been Amazingly enough, James reported receiving no complaints um, 
from anybody about my absence and t because Terry's been able to handle all the administrative stuff to make it work in my absence when I haven't been able to drag myself here and the day of the joint meeting I was all done I couldn't one of the stay. concerns I have is um, planning is Hannah she doesn't seem to bring a lot to the meetings and do you is that a day-to-day -day, do you work a lot with her are we getting what we're essentially paying for or is, I mean I'm not sure that should we answer <coughs> that James should you answer that um, I, I mean I'll say it's it been a work takes, in progress I mean we've talked about this it takes time for a staff to to gel and to provide the service that we expect but I think you know one of the things that was brought up last week was looking at you know it, Staffing options for improvement, that's always on the, on the table. And that's part of why we're kind of trying to do this overlap, because there are, um, there are areas in planning that I have experience with from other municipalities that Terry didn't have experience with, so it's easier for me to take on. And that's going to allow us to start doing some more of that work in-house and have it be less of a, a struggle. Hannah is an exceptionally bright young woman. Um, I think she is still trying to find her feet as far as balancing her workload properly. And, um, you know, I did, did express to her, uh, not the last time she was down, the time previously, that, you know, she has the knowledge. She just needs to utilize that knowledge and, and project it and project her confidence. She needs to just be more confident, I think. And then she's really going to start, hopefully she'll start taking off at the meetings. And so you're saying on. that we are paying for a contract there that isn't knowledgeable? Is that what you're saying? Or? No, she's very knowledgeable. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's very, she's very knowledgeable. I think she's just very, um, I don't think she, quite feels 100% confident speaking up at the board meetings all the time yet. She's getting there. I've seen improvement. Um, but we do, they only bill us, just so you're aware, um, it's not like Terry and I where we're here and if we're here we're earning our hourly pay. Right. They only bill us for what the work SMPDC actually does. Oh, so okay. all the stuff that's that Terry good. and I are doing, and that's, that's part of it, is all the work that Terry and I do <laughs> primarily Terry, but all the work that Terry and I do on the planning aspect is stuff that SMPDC ca cannot bill us for because they didn't do it. They're not billing those hours. And the more that we're able to help each other out to keep both positions going smooth, we can start bringing more and more of that in-house, which is what uh, Lee J, who was here before Hannah um, and still assists us with Hannah, uh, Lee J and I have discussed it multiple times because the majority of municipalities this size, um, their code enforcement and their planning administrative assistant, their, their code enforcements are doing a, a large chunk of the planning work as well. And so they're not seeing big bills from SMPDC like we are sometimes getting because there's not, there's always going to be that need for an outside person who is certified in this. But there's a lot of the little odds and endsy things that we can pull back in, as long as we can get the work balance worked out. So Which that we're starting to do that anyway. We're starting yes. to take over more. We're taking over more of the finding of facts and that kind of stuff that they bill us for. That were I did two of them today. You That's know, typically the capable. largest bill is the findings of fact, which is a legal document that Terry and Irish can do can do in house. That's the biggest I did. Biggest I did two of them today. Hannah reviewed uh, reviewed them and said that, um, with the exception of changing one date, that they were perfect. So this is going to be additional money that we'll be keeping for the town because that is important to us as well as not wasting the taxpayers' dollars. And that again is part of why we're trying to get her as as the ultimately the deputy. Uh, code enforcement officer because why should we pay what another municipality wants to charge for their employees that are potentially making significantly more to pay them for a day because I got sick you know it's not something we should have to do yeah, this is something that we've run into in the past the problem we've had was you know with 
only one person being certified and you know, for one reason or another we've lost the uh, uh, code enforcement and uh, as you said we'd have to go scrambling trying to get some of the other towns to do it. Um, I don't see a problem with you know doing this it's not like the plumbing inspections take up a huge amount of your time anyway so no. is if she's just filling in then it wouldn't be for uh, much time anyways. Um, I'm going to make a motion that we appoint Terry Wilson as the licensed plumbing inspector for Berwick with with a term without term. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And we didn't even have to bribe you with cocoa. No. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys very much. Oh, thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. And as much as we love you, we're going to scoot out of here and let uh, you guys carry on your business. You guys have a great evening. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Town manager's report. The American Legion has offered to purchase a storage trailer to store emergency management supplies. Uh, this includes um, storage space for cots and, and blankets. It's an eight by six trailer. Chief Plant um, evaluated it today and said this would meet, meet their needs. Um, so this would be the, in the case of needing to open up a warming shelter. We have it all ready to go in a trailer. If we have to bring it to the school or town hall, actually Patty and I met with Lisa and, and Chief Plant today to go over some um, emergency management planning as well, and this came up. So tonight I'm looking for a motion to uh, accept the gift of the trailer. What kind of trailer is it? Is it like a kind of like a regular pole trailer? Yeah. So, like, so not, like, not like a tractor trailer. No, it's mm -hmm. six six by eight. Okay. Yeah, enclosed, <clears throat> and it'll be stored in the firehouse, correct? And that's what I, I was told by Chief Plan that once it's there, it'll be stored inside, so it wouldn't be out in the weather. Or yeah, that's because 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 <laughs> I mean those things are good, but you know, eight ten years they're just they fall apart. Like well. It, it, it just don't want rodents or anything. In the yeah, vehicle, exactly. So, <laughs> you know. is, um, so if it's if it's inside, that's definitely a yeah. that's a good thing. I'll make a motion that we accept the gift from the American Legion. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I, I just want to comment. You no, know, the American Legion has been doing a fantastic job, you know, helping people in the community. Um, anybody, I'll put it out there. They're next door right now, but um, <laughs> any anybody that has any needs, get in touch with the Legion Post and uh, there's a good chance they'll be able to help you. I, yeah, I hear about every every day there's some new story about someone they helped in a tangible way that's just life changing. Um, and it's not just, not just veterans either that they help, yep. so. Yeah, region wide. Just wanna send out a message that uh, Judy Burgess passed away and this is what the room is named after and I'm just gonna miss running into her and reminiscing about her uh, planning days and she was a long long time long staff time. and force in the you know the Berwick planning department in a lot of ways our community is where it's at from the work that she pulled together we are working on budgets and we're a little bit ahead of schedule from last year and we can probably start budget meetings at the second meeting of January. If you insist. <laughs> <laughs> I can get it done and not have to be worried about timelines as much, be as crunched. What have any extra meetings you mean? Yep. Yeah. Space it out maybe a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Less we'll have... extra meetings. Yeah. <laughs> the playground is now open. And the rec department is planning a grand opening in the spring once the phase is complete with the paving of the courts. We've got a lot of work going on in the lobby. The painting's begun. Um, the ceiling's been painted. Looks great. Uh, right now, the HVAC improvements are underway. So they're installing a humidifier and a dehumidifier. It's very dry in the winter and very wet in the summer. Long overdue. That <laughs> completes yeah. my report. Any questions for the town manager? All right. And we have no communications. Accounts payable. 
confidence and send us any notifications nope. to go up and nope. rates again. <laughs> <laughs> still just still just one price increase. All right. We have payroll warrant number 35 from November 30th. The amount of $88,931.81. Payroll warrant number 36 from uh, November 30th in the amount of $1,014.52. Accounts payable warrant number 37 from November 30th in the amount of $119,783.18. Payroll warrant number 38 from December 7th in the amount of $86,391.34. And accounts warrant number 39. Hey, that's no. 39 from December 5th in the amount of $124,365.98. I make the motion that we pay our bills. No second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills are paid. Wheels keep on turning. Uh, all right, new business, uh, personnel policy. Again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think most, if not all, of these changes were discussed at the last meeting, so nothing should be um, a surprise. And I think you all have this paper titled Personnel Final Changes. Yep. Probably we'll have another one titled Personnel Policy Final Changes, but... Um, so the first change was 2.5 in the storm closing policy. Um, the library was for some reason left out and it was added back in. Um, in 3.4, under classification of employment, um, it was specified that while all employees are probationary for six months, police officers are the exception because they are probationary for one year after graduation from the academy. Um, which is also stated in their MAP contract, but uh, it was pointed out that we should put it in the personnel policy just so there's no confusion there. Um, I also noted a, a, a they that we forgot to change in that same section. Uh, next is 5.7 pay periods. Somebody pointed out that we had Sunday 2400, um, which was changed to Sunday 2359. <coughs> Uh, 7.4 was actually added um, because someone pointed out we should have the drug and alcohol use and abuse policy in the body. So anything that is relevant to all employees and not just CDL drivers was added to the body. Um, but the, the appendix didn't change at all. We just added that, that portion that was relevant to everyone into the body. And... We also added um, leave without pay back in, which had been removed, and we decided to add it back in after our discussion last meeting. And those are all the changes. Now, ignoring any minor typos, spelling errors, formatting issues, does anybody have any issues with the body of the policy as it currently stands? We're just looking for a motion for uh, approval to take effect January 1st, 2024. Okay. It's the only thing I have to add. So, um, did Linda send any last minute emails that we were missing a section that we need or anything like that? Not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I will make a motion to adopt the new personnel policy effective January 2024 um, and then just pending typos and any grammatical errors just being addressed as, as seen. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. January 1st, 2024. Okay. Personal property write-off requests. James. Dear Credit sold this equipment they were billed for in May and August of 2021, and this bill is for April 1st, 2022. As a result, they should not have been billed. So tonight, seeking a write-off in the amount of $868.02. So 
I will make a motion to accept the town manager's suggestion to write off the $868.02 to Deer Credit Union of 310 Portland Street. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? And nothing special. Second public comment. No public left. I'd, I'd just like to make one comment is about the parade. It was a fantastic parade. Um, I really want to thank the rec department and Shannon and Josh for putting it together, you know, working with Summersworth. Um, we couldn't have asked for better weather, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, and, it, you know, everybody I talked to thought it was just great, and uh, hopefully the next one will be just as good. Yeah. Huge turnout. Yes, very nice. Yes, it was not just, you know, it was Berwick, North Berwick, South Berwick, Lebanon, Rochester. People from all over showed up, um, which is great. Love to see that. The more the merrier. So next year, let's see if we can break some more records of people. <laughs> and times. <laughs> Any other business on agenda items? All right, well, we are going to go into executive session for the discussion of personnel. No decisions will be made in the executive session, so we won't be coming back out. So I make the motion that we enter executive session under Title I, 405, 6A for the discussion of personnel. No second that. All those in favor? Good night, folks. <laughs>